I'm sure so many things will get explained the further we go. But I just feel like this is about to put me in the biggest reading slump. These books are all so weird. I still don't know what this is about. The Bible. I'm sorry to this book. Wait, this is queer? Is it too weird for even me? I understand this recommendation because I like weird things. But what the fuck did you guys just make me read? Hello friends, we're doing it again. I'm putting my reading in your hands. Let me back up. One year ago, I put out a video called Things I Love in Books where I listed a bunch of really specific things that I love in books. Not genres, not even subgenres, within that. Things that are across different authors and genres and whatever, just little things that I like. And you gave me recommendations. That video got like 500 comments and I typed out into a spreadsheet every single book that was recommended in total, there were 300 book recommendations. So that's this, this big fancy spreadsheet. Six months ago, I picked five books from that list and I read them and I vlogged it and it was great. Well, I read these five books that you recommended based on specific things. The fact that I like Shakespeare, you recommended this, I didn't like it. I told you I like space training, you recommended this, I didn't like it. I said I like dark games, you recommended this, I hated this with every fiber of my being. I liked post-apocalyptic stuff, you recommended this, and I thought it was good. I like insulated mysteries with weird things happening, you recommended this, and I really liked it. So I walked away with two books that I enjoyed, but they weren't five stars, they weren't my new favorite thing of all time, and there's no one to blame but you. Like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I feel like in the last six months you've gotten to know my reading even more maybe recommendations can be even more uh, specific I appreciate anybody who takes the time to think of something that I might like like that's so thoughtful of you so thoughtful that on that video where I read your recommendations you then left me 644 comments with more recommendations so no, I haven't changed this spreadsheet because I still have hundreds of books I've never even heard of that I still want to get through. But so I'm going to pick some books from the spreadsheet and then I'm also going to look at at least the top rated comment. Whatever got the most likes and therefore the most votes of something that you think I would like, I'm going to read that. I literally have not even looked at those comments in months because it's overwhelming to think of like adding that many books to the spreadsheet. I've also just picked up two books that outside of these recommendation videos, I have been recommended so many times, like aggressively recommended in the last like three months. So I'm going to pick up those and those might be in the comments of one of these videos as well. So the goal is to read five books. I want them to be five different things. I don't just want to read five Shakespeare inspired stories. I want to tick a lot of different boxes. So where do we start? I'm gonna start with telling you that this is one of my five picks. This is This is How We Lose the Time War by Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. Everyone has been recommending this to me because I talk about how I want to start reading more sci-fi and I want to read more short books. And so this was recommended to me a ton recently. I still don't know the plot. I just bought it. The second book that's been desperately recommended to me that I found at the thrift store. So amazing. Uh, some of you are going to be really excited about this, but I have to tell you, I'm really worried. Um, it's the library at Mount Char. Who wrote this? Scott Hawkins. Um, Middle Game is one of my favorite books of all time. It was my favorite book of 2019. I won't stop talking about it. And since how much I've been talking about it, every time I mention it, I get inundated with comments that are saying, oh my god, how have you not read the library at Mount Char? It's the same thing. You're gonna love it. 
And for some reason, my brain goes to like, I don't want to read it if it's the exact same thing because I already read a thing I love. I don't know what's wrong with me. But when I read a book and someone tells me something else is identical, like I don't want to read it because I've already read it. But obviously it's different. I don't know what this is, but it's not something I gravitate towards, but you told me to read it. So I got it. I'm going to look at the synopsis of all these books as we go on. From my original list of 300 books, I read the most, the absolute most recommended, which was this. And then I told you next time I was going to do the next most recommended. So the book that got the next most amount of votes is called Starry Eyes by Jen Bennett. One of my goals, like I have some goals with reading these books, like I want to hit all the boxes. I want to read something I've absolutely never heard of before is one of them. I want to read something already on my TBR shelf is one of my challenges or was one of my challenges last time. We're kind of continuing that because I have no idea what this is, but I've seen it on Book Outlet. So we're going to get it from there. Um, this one was recommended based on uh Shakespeare Shakespeare related so this was recommended via sci-fi stuff this is recommended just because it's weird I guess and then I'd really like to try another space training book so uh if we're going with one that's already on my TBR it's called oh shoot what was it called The Weight of the Stars by Kay Ankrum I do like space stuff but I don't know why this one didn't really work for me, but I'm definitely into more YA space. Okay, so that's four books. We have to go to that video and find the top rated comment. I have literally no idea what it's going to be. So let's find out together. Okay. Are you ready? The Bible? because I pinned it because I thought it was funny oh my god how dare you not read the library of Mount Char okay so I am already reading the one that got that got 45 likes okay something I'm already seeing recommended a few times and getting a good amount of likes is Annihilation I have been recommended Annihilation since the start of my channel and I I can't tell you why I haven't picked it up because I know that it has some elements of things that I like so I don't know what's stopping me. I actually saw it at Value Village like a bunch of times and kept seeing it. And I was like, should I get it? I don't know. I think it's actually kind of short too, which would be conducive to the challenge. I really hope Annihilation is on that spreadsheet. It's very weird and in an enclosed area has paranormal elements. I think it could be your kind of weird. I haven't seen the movie. I barely watched the trailer, so I really would be able to go into it not knowing much. I wonder if you'd like Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. It fits in a lot of categories. Seclusion, finding out the truth later, not really an island but kind of a similar feel. Annihilation by Jeff Vandermeer. Seclusion, forced to work together, unexplained science fiction element, survival element. Okay, I, I guess that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna gather all the books up and then I will start reading. I know last time my reaction to picking the books was way too lengthy but I like finding out what the books are about with you too. So we're gonna do that in the next clip once I have them all. All right, shout out to Fast Shipping and Library Holds because I got everything all ready to go. From Book Outlet, we got Starry Eyes, which is bigger than I thought it would be. And then from Indigo, The Weight of the Stars. Let's find out what these books are about. Oh my god, look at that. That's fun. Um, this has something to do with space. I'm not gonna read the whole thing because I feel like that could get boring, but I'd like us both to know what I'm reading. This follows a girl named Ryan. She dreams of traveling across the stars, but a career in space isn't an option for a girl who lives in a trailer park on the wrong side of town. One day she meets Alexandria, a furious loner who spurns Ryan's offer of friendship. After a horrific accident leaves Alexandria with a broken arm, the girls are brought together to spite themselves and Ryan learns her secret. Alexandria's mother is an astronaut who volunteered for a one-way trip to the edge of the solar system. Every night without fail, Alexandria waits to catch radio signals from her mother. 
and now it's up to Ryan to lift her onto the roof day after day until the silence between them grows into friendship and eventually something more. Why have I never heard anybody? I've heard like two people ever mention this book, at least on the internet, obviously. Some people recommended it to me, so thank you. So is it not actually in space? It kind of sounds like um, a little bit like Come Find Me by Megan Miranda, which is about like radio signals and family and sci-fi stuff, but not actually set in space. I figured this would be space training, but I didn't really know what it was. I just like vaguely heard it was something that I should check out. So I added it to my TBR. This is the library at Mount Char. Carolyn's not so different from the other people around her. She likes guacamole and cigarettes and steak. She knows how to use a phone. Clothes are a bit tricky, but everyone says nice things about her outfit with the Christmas sweater over the gold bicycle shorts. After all, she was a normal American herself once. That was a long time ago, of course, before her parents died, before she and the others were taken in by the man they called father. In the years since then, Carolyn hasn't had a chance to get out much. Instead, she and her adopted siblings have been raised according to father's ancient customs. They've studied the books in his library and learned some of the secrets of his power. And sometimes they've wondered if their cruel tutor might secretly be God. Okay. Let's move over to a different tone. Starry eyes. Ever since last year's homecoming dance, best friends turned best enemies. Zori and Lennon have made an art of avoiding each other. It doesn't hurt that their families are the modern day Californian version of the Montagues and Capulets. <laughs> but when a group camping trip goes south, Zori and Lennon find themselves stranded in the wilderness, alone, together. Oh, amazing. Friends to enemies, forced togetherness, Shakespeare, camping. All right, and then I have two little books. This is how you lose the time war. I, since posting about this on Instagram, um, I have now gotten so many comments saying that I'm gonna hate it and a lot saying I'm gonna love it. So, oh my god. In the ashes of a dying world, Red finds a letter marked burn before reading, signed blue. Okay, so begins an unlikely correspondence between two rival agents in a war that stretches through the vast reaches of time and space. Red belongs to the agency, a post-singularity technotopia. Huh? Blue belongs to Garden, a single vast consciousness embedded in all organic matter. Huh? Their pasts are bloody and their futures mutually exclusive. They have nothing in common, save that they're the best and they're alone. I still don't know what this is about. I'm weirdly less interested now. How did that happen? This is Annihilation. Everyone's read this. Area X has been cut off from the rest of the world for decades. Nature has reclaimed the last vestige? Vestige? Vestige of human civilization. The first expedition returned with reports of a pristine Edenic landscape. The second expedition ended in mass suicide. The third in a hail of gunfire as its members turned on one another. Hold on, I need to read all of that again. Now they're on the 11th expedition. The group is made up of four women. Their mission is to map the terrain, record all observations of their surroundings and of one another, and above all, avoid being contaminated by Area X itself. I'm so glad that I hadn't read the synopsis of any of these books before choosing to trust your recommendations. Good morning, it's February 1st. I decided I'm gonna make this video more of a reading vlog where my real life is also a part of it. It's the first of the month and I need to get ready for filming because I have to film three videos today as well as clips for this as well as clips for another video that you're not gonna see for a while. This time of year is just really hard to film because the sun sets, you know, an hour after I've gotten home from work, so it's not realistic to film after work. So all I have is the weekend, uh, which I feel like is normal for a lot of people, but seeing as, you know, I have so many other things going on, I have a family, I have responsibilities, I run other businesses and whatnot, there's not a lot of free time at all. 
Uh, so I'm trying this year to get all of my stuff done on Saturdays. So Sunday can be more of a free time day. I really don't know how that's gonna work. If it's gonna work, but we're trying that today. So I am getting ready to film. I've been asked a lot um, about how <laughs> To people who really don't care, this is going to be weird, but I get comments all the time about how to curl my hair. So I'm going to show you probably in this vlog the two ways that I curl my hair. But first I need to fix my face. Not that there's anything wrong with a face with no makeup on it. I just prefer uh, stuff happening. Whew. Okay, so the next question that I get is how I read so much. I don't really know how to answer that because I kind of read faster than the average person, apparently. Um, but I did just listen to an audiobook for 15 minutes. So that's my one tip I can give you is to, if you can, mix up like audiobook and physically reading because I do want to read this book you know, with my eyes later today. But the audiobook is on Scribd. So I just listened to 30 minutes of the audiobook in 15 minutes, which is only like 20 pages, but it's something. Especially with um, fantasy books, I find it helpful to start them as audiobooks because it's like being told a story and I think it's just easier to kind of get into. I've trained my hair to kind of curl. So this is what it looks like after I wash it and leave it overnight. It's not cute, I have to define like every curl. But at least it has a little bit to it and I'm using less heat. I just take this size of curling iron and I just wrap it closer to the bottom of the wand and that's it and then i just do that for like every other piece and i always make sure i go in different directions so today what i'm up to i'm filming my wrap up then i'm filming my tbr then i'm filming a thriller recommendation video oh also if i got too tight of a curl i'll just hold it straight for a second so it doesn't look as like woo! i have to plan some book club things um, I need to get some giveaway books ready. We're reading The Other People by CJ Tudor. You still have time to participate if somehow you've missed that I have a book club. I got 10 copies from the publisher to help me kick it off. So I'm sending it to some co-hosts and future co-hosts and I'm giving away five copies. So I need to choose those winners today. Um, get all their mailing information and then see what we have left basically i've allotted like a hundred dollars to ship out all the books to people and then i started a coffee account um so people who wanted to help support the book club and support other people getting access to the book club pick can do that and we got a hundred dollars donated as well so whatever i have left over after i've shipped out everything that money will go towards buying people copies from like book depository and just like providing copies to people. I know a couple people who are in countries where it's really hard to access um, not just this book, but books in general. Also, I feel like mentioning that like, I don't think my hair is particularly like, I don't do it in any special nice way. Like when anyone compliments my hair, I appreciate it, but like, I don't think it's that special. So anybody who's watching this who's like, oh, I do my hair way better. Like I'm sure you do and you don't, you don't need this. You don't want this this isn't what you asked for <laughs> and then for reading time i'll pretty much listen to the audiobook probably again anytime i have the opportunity um so like while i'm editing photos or something and i can listen to something i might as well the library mount chart is definitely interesting so far we're following a character <laughs> we're following a character named caroline who i don't totally understand like what's happening yet um but there's all these librarians who all have like a point of study but some of them are actually like animals or 
want to be animals i don't even understand what's happening but it seems to be kids who are like taken from their parents and then they join this like cult type thing okay i'm just sitting down to film my january wrap up and i actually hate the way my hair turned out so ignore all of my tips it's way later i got a lot done today and now i look like an egg um i'm 70 pages in to mount char and i'm not I'm not not liking it. I just had to read chapter three twice because like I was not grasping like what not what's happening like I get it. I just I would have liked more of an introduction. I feel like we were just thrust into a lot and obviously it's for a reason. I'm sure so many things will get explained the further we go. But I just feel like this is about to put me in the biggest reading slump. Usually in a challenge video, I start with my shortest book. And I don't know how I ended up starting with my longest book. Because I have the audiobook, that's why. But I'm going to put it on pause for now. And I'm going to move over to my shortest book. Uh, the whatever, Time War. I'm sorry to this book. I'm very sorry. I lied to you. I said I was going to vlog my real life but i haven't vlogged at all today and i haven't read at all today well that's not true i listened to another couple chapters of the library at mount char i i don't even i just i can't talk about it until i've done it like i oh boy um i'm gonna read this though now i just took off the dust jacket so i can start in on it and i hope that i finish this today i don't see why not it's super bowl time we have spent lots of family time together Liam had hockey today and now they are enjoying the Super Bowl at a friend's house and I'm sitting here I took my makeup off threw my hair up made a cup of coffee and I'm gonna read a book all by myself because that's what I do on Super Bowl Sunday I'll check in with you pretty quickly and just let you know my initial feelings okay I'm checking in already at page two because what the fuck have you guys recommended to me like what What's happening? This bitch is a transformer. I lied. I didn't finish the book yesterday. It's now Monday. It's actually almost Tuesday. Today was a Monday. Mondays are such a struggle for me. One, I mean, it's hard to wake up at 5 a.m. on a Monday and just kick off the work week. And two, Mondays just go by really quickly, which you'd think would be a good thing but i consistently on mondays feel like i accomplished nothing that day of my list of tasks but here we are exhausted on a monday evening and i want to go to bed but i have like 40 pages left of the time war book i really don't know how to feel about this it's such a strange book that you'd think i would have a clear opinion like if i'm enjoying it or not I don't know. I feel like it's going to take until the end until I can really gather all my thoughts. But by then, I might fall asleep before I can tell you. It's weirdly reminding me of Illuminae. And I say that very lightly because it's not Illuminae. Obviously, it's not written like Illuminae. It's not the plot of Illuminae. But something about the vibes. I think it's just like the back and forth weird communication in letters between two characters. It's doing it for me uh and they're two women i think i mean they are two women but i just feel like in the context of this book where like they're literally traveling through time and like taking on different bodies is that what's happening like i just i don't know i'm liking that aspect but it's is it too weird for even me hi guys welcome back to another video was frightening. Liam has hockey practice today. Wow. Wow. So that's where we're going. And I definitely need a change of pace. So we're gonna move over to just a regular old contemporary. It's about a camping trip that goes south. I just need something rooted in reality because, ugh. I'm gonna film you at hockey practice. Is that no, cool? No. Oh. No. Privacy. No nine-year-olds that need it good morning i started starry eyes 
I'm barely into it because I fell asleep. But it's funny because the last video I made, I talked about how there are two types of YA protagonists in their 12th grade year. They're either type A and like really know what they're doing with their life and they need to be shaken up or they're like cynical and angry and need to be nicer and they're trying to learn a lesson. And I liked that the book I read didn't do that. This one is that type A girl, yet again, who is being sent to like this camping trip. And I think it's supposed to like broaden her horizons and you know, switch things up. Good morning. Oh. We're going to school and work. Today's a launch day at work, so new prints. There's one with bugs on it. It's very exciting. And I will read more of my book when I'm home. Okay, Wednesday afternoon. The snow has killed my curls and I have to film today. I'm about to film a video. So, oh well. It's okay because I'm on chapter 19 of Starry Eyes and you guys have recommended such a good one. It's got a mix of everything. It's camping but it's also kind of survival-y. We've got a slow burn kind of romance, but that doesn't take over the entire plot. And it's uh, what could we call this? A friends to lovers to friends to enemies to lovers romance. It is good. If I had to rate it at this point, it'd be a four, but like who knows what amazingness could happen in the end. So after I film, I will continue reading that, but I also have a lot to do for work tonight. And Liam has not a hockey thing, but it's like a dry land hockey workout thing. I also got a package from Indigo. And I hope that I ordered what I thought I ordered. I'm really hoping I have a new bullet journal in here. That's the size that I think it is. It's not, okay. It's fine, I got a normal size one, which I was okay with because I filled up both my normal size bullet journals. So I got a new one this year that's like extra large. It's okay that this is this size because I'm not using it for the same thing. I know I said I would vlog, but I don't do anything. <laughs> it's currently snowing. I just don't have a lot going on in life besides uh, work, this channel, and taking my kid to his various activities. So I hope the snow stops soon. I want to enjoy spring, but I've decided to change my attitude and I think we're going to go snowboarding tomorrow. I finished Starry Eyes and I'm going to start my next star related book while Robbie takes Liam to hockey today. So Starry Eyes was really cute. I definitely understand the recommendation. Hello? Hi. Who are you? Um, your mother. Honestly, it just takes a lot for a YA contemporary romance to get five stars from me at this point. Um, I can appreciate everything that this did, and I think it's a pretty strong four star for me. This definitely reminded me a lot of the other hiking, camping books that I've read. So if you liked this and you haven't read um the names they gave us by Emery Lord or Everything Beautiful is Not Ruined by Danielle Young Allman, definitely give it a go. This had a lot of like YA tropes and it fit into a traditional mold. The main character in here I will say was very high drama. Like I feel like so many statements were just um there was a lot of metaphors so it was like i touched his chest and it felt like a brick wall or like he shed a tear and she was like i felt like my world was crumbling apart seeing him cry and i think that's relatable i'm sure i was that way as a teenager just very like every emotion is heightened glad there was a good recommendation and i'm glad i broke up some of the sci-fi stuff and now we're moving on to this. Every single chapter of this book has like a number of minutes. And it's really random. Like it's not counting down to anything or counting up to something. And I don't know what it means. We're in my bed again 
at 10 p.m. again. I'm just now getting a chance to start The Weight of the Stars. And I just have this feeling that I'm gonna love it. I've read a lot of good books lately, but most of them took me a while to like know that they were gonna be five stars. This one, I'm not saying it's gonna be five stars, I'm 18 pages in, but I just have this feeling. It's definitely my kind of thing. It's a space book set on Earth, so it's naturally appealing already. But just the writing style and the vibes, I just have a feeling about this. I'm only 70 pages in, and it's a day or two later. I wanted to finish the book in like one to two days, but I don't know what's happening. Um, it's really special like I can't really explain why but I'm at like the verge of tears even though nothing that sad or impactful has happened and I just want this book to last forever because it's really good and I feel like it's really special and I love it so we're following a girl and there's a new girl at school and she is uh, checking in on her for some space type reason. She's basically part of this family that has to do with this space thing. Um, it's such an interesting like setting because it's the real world but it's like in the future but it's not really describing the state of the world. Okay, I need to head to bed but I'm on page like 150. I love this book. I love the tone. The main character's last name is Bird and people have started calling her Bird and now I can't stop thinking of her in my head as Vanessa Morgan because in one of the only shows I've ever watched as an adult, Finding Carter, my favorite character was Bird. You probably know her from Riverdale? Good morning. We're headed to the ski hill. Robbie's gonna drive and I'm gonna finish The Weight of the Stars. I feel like I've called this The Weight of Our Stars a couple times, whoops. But I desperately need to finish it. Today, my goal was to read Annihilation. Um, I was gonna do that up at the hill, but I didn't finish this book. So who knows what's happening? We're gonna be up there for the day and we'll see what I can accomplish. Tell them we stopped at the store. No. To look didn't. for books. And I just found something very exciting. I found this, which I'm about to start reading. Do you already have this? I got it from the library. Mm. So now I have my own. I also found this, which is a book I love, but I donated my ARC. And then I found this, which everyone told me to read. And then I found this. I want to talk about the weight of the stars before I forget and then don't talk about it like I did with what every other book in this video some other books and like last weekend I split up the days so like it's a family heavy fun day and then tomorrow is gonna be work 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 get it all done I loved this so much and I just kind of want to scream about it like I can't really get my thoughts all together just it was just so lovely it was a tender a tender book friendship groups written like this and groups of like five plus characters where every single character is so well developed and explained and I can envision them all in my head 
it just reminds me that it can be done basically because I feel like there are so many books. I read a lot of books that have the friendship element because I love a group of friends so much and all the characters just kind of are there but aren't distinct and don't have their own like chance to shine. I'm very tired. Every single character in this book I can picture. I want a spin-off book about every single one of these characters. It's nuts. It felt kind of post-apocalyptic, um, dystopian, and I can't quite pinpoint why. Something to do with the writing and the overtone just felt dystopian. It was so weird. So yeah, my goal was to read Annihilation today. I'm officially behind on my reading goal. And tomorrow's gonna be busy, but I only have tomorrow left because I'm gonna start contemporary a thon on Monday. So this is really small. I know I picked up this today, which I'm just excited to own. I think it's really cool. And I hope that I love the first part. It is only 195 pages, but the text is small. So we'll see what we can do with that. Um, I don't even know about the library at Mount Char. Maybe I'll just listen to the audiobook while I'm cleaning and doing random things tomorrow because I just don't think it's for me and I don't want to struggle through it. I just want to listen to the audiobook and not get it over with but kind of get it over with. I have really high expectations for this because every single time last year that I mentioned Wilder Girls by Rory Power, which is one of my favorite books of the year, um, at the beginning I was comparing it to Lord of the Flies because that was a book that was mentioned a lot in connection with Wilder Girls. And then every time I mentioned it, people were like, no this is Annihilation. Like Wilder Girls and Annihilation are so similar. And so I know, I feel like I kind of understand the vibes of Annihilation already. And I hope that, what if this is like a favorite freaking book? Hello, happy Sunday. It's already about noon and I've accomplished a lot for work. I went to my parents help them with stuff. I showered, washed my hair. Go me. Some pictures for Instagram. Um, yeah, and I just remembered today is the Oscars. So I don't know if I'm gonna watch them. I wanted to do something for work kind of related to the Oscars, but we'll see how that goes if I get a chance to watch. That's how I curl my hair. The other way I curl my hair. Sometimes for the back, I will still use a curler because it's hard for me to like get all the hair I want and flip it through. But yeah. The boys are just about to head out to go see Birds of Prey, which I have no interest in. So I'll get a nice afternoon to really focus on everything that I need to do. All right, I'm currently editing my video and finishing Library at Mount Char. I really don't know how I'm gonna complete all of my thoughts on this book. Um, yeah, but the Oscars is gonna start in about 20 minutes. So I think the boys are gonna bring pizza home and I'm gonna read Annihilation during the commercial breaks. That's my current game plan. If she doesn't win, I'll riot. Lord darn uh. <laughs> oh my gosh, I am in love with Annihilation. And I don't know if this feeling will continue the entire time, but the first like half, amazing. Like so good, so intriguing, so unique. So like there's this project x this group of women go to like survey it and all these other expeditions have come before them 
um, and they don't, they don't really know, like, everything, and they're sent there without, like, any technology or anything, and very little information, and things slowly get revealed, and these characters are so interesting, and they don't even call each other by their first names, like, they're the psychologist, and the surveyor, and it's all just very weird. I love it so much, but it's so late. Hi, welcome to the wrap up portion of this video. This is the worst I've ever done at filming a challenge video because I think I forgot what I was doing half the time. And I read some real weird things and have no idea how to discuss them. So I just didn't. I'm really sorry if this has been garbage up until this point, but it, we're not gonna turn it around now. I guess we should start at the end. Um, what the fuck was this? I understand this recommendation because I like weird things, but what the fuck did you guys just make me read? I don't think I've ever felt uh, dumber reading a book. I, have, I don't understand what just happened. Uh, I need to finish the trilogy and watch the movie because literally what? This book was like reading a video game. Imagine playing a video game with no visuals. Like you're just dropped into this jungle and you have all the explanation and you have to like trudge through and like interact with these different characters and then there's cut scenes to like your character's backstory but like you don't get to see it so you're just confused you're having a good time you want to keep going but you're just lost in the wilderness <laughs> that's how i felt it's so confusing talking about this book and talking about this book and talking about this book i've lost my mind let's call a spade a spade and admit that uh your girl picked up too much sci-fi this week i guess this was their fantasy but they they felt like sci-fi Ooh, this is the worst video i've ever filmed i can't go back now i'm two weeks deep i liked so many aspects of this like I liked the descriptions. I liked the ominous horror tone. I liked the main character and the backstory. I liked the weird, um, ambiguous characters where like we don't know anybody's name. There's so much I liked about this, but yo, this is a two star. I don't know how and I don't know how to explain it. I just don't think this was successful what was this trying to do because the twists and the reveals and the like big moments didn't they just weren't <laughs> completed in a way that made this um a successful reading experience like i just i don't get it some things were so good and were building up to interesting dynamic moments and then it was like wait what i can't explain this without spoiling it. i need to watch the movie but i have to do that after this video so like i'm just leaving you with nothing i've never been so at a loss for words and how to explain like how I liked something and detested it at the same time. Oh wait, yeah, that has happened before. A couple days earlier with the library of Mount Char. No, okay, this is actually the opposite. Like, I think this book was successful in what it did. It built this really, I don't want to say interesting world because I didn't find it. Uh, interesting. But it clearly had so much intent behind it and thought and world building even though these books are all so weird i can't even call it a magic system but the magic system like didn't work for me 
I don't really like the all-encompassing nature of a story like this where just anything is possible because it doesn't put the same tension it doesn't have the same stakes that the fantasy I normally love does it's just like if anything is possible and there are no rules I just found it so hard to truly care and get invested even though I've said before that I love um, the weird magical stuff that's like unexplained magic. So this was a great recommendation, but I don't know how to express why it was a two star. I think this book was trying to be really funny too. Like I just got the feeling that um, it was trying to be funny. I didn't find it funny. It also wasn't scary though, and I feel like it was trying to be scary. I actively hated the dialogue. Uh, I thought it was terrible. I see what I was trying to do, and I think I can see why other people like it. Then I don't think I talked about this is how you lose the time war, because this was so short that it left me, um, not with a feeling of like being incomplete, but it just all happened so fast and left itself so unexplained on purpose that it's hard to form fully fleshed out thoughts because the book itself wasn't fully fleshed out. But that's not a criticism, like that's just the nature of this book. We're following two different agents time traveling the strands of time and you're just dropped into the middle of an intense story where there's clearly lots of history but you're not told that history and you just have to kind of accept that you know nothing nothing is going to be explained to you and you're just in it this is a female female romance too. And it's an epistolary book. Two things I had no idea. They're just writing letters back and forth to each other, having not met. Uh, they're like rivals. There are no descriptions. Like you just have to come up with your own ideas of what these people look like. Are they human? Um, how are they traveling through time? Like what is the vehicle allowing them to do this? How are they even communicating? This is one of the strangest books I've ever read and I haven't decided if I loved it or not. I think I need to read it again and reading it again won't give you any more explanation but I think reading it again knowing how much it's going to give me will let me just enjoy what it is doing uh, which is commenting on loneliness we also had starry eyes which maybe i thoroughly explained um though i don't even remember my rating <laughs> then the weight of the stars the only book that i can genuinely say like i really enjoyed and thought was wonderful and will recommend to many, many people. These all had elements that I like, um, but this one was just that perfect light sci-fi, hard-hitting, um, queer thing that was just made for me. So thank you for all the recommendations. Feel free to recommend any more down below, even though it it probably doesn't have a really high payoff for you. I still appreciate the fact that you do it. That you think of me, that you think of titles that I might love, and it was an interesting journey. Even if I hated everything I read, it would be such an interesting journey just seeing what you think I'm gonna like. Thank you very much for watching. Hope I didn't piss you off too much, and I'll see you later. Bye!